What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. We are still diving into some questions that I got in the most recent AMA or the Ask Me Anything that I, uh, that we did on Instagram Live a couple days ago. For those that don't know, we are going to be doing those on a recurring basis every single week. So if you want to join, you want to come join the community, ask questions, and just hang out with me, um, go find me at the Anthony Vecino on Instagram. Give me a follow, and then I will let you know on there when those lives come up and you can just come chill. That'd be awesome. Like take this relationship, make it more than just one way. Let's go have a conversation. But in that AMA, I wasn't able to get to all the questions. So I want to bring them up here. And one of the questions, actually it's kind of a two, two parter. I, I, the person asked the question, but then I'm going to add on a layer to it. One is how has your self image changed as you've become more successful? The other part of this that I want to explore is how has money changed you? Like, from when you were poor to, to where you are now, like how has money changed my life? And so let's let's unpack the first one, the self-image question. And this one's interesting because on one hand you would think maybe, oh, I've become more confident in my abilities because I now have data to point to. But the truth is I've always had a delusional amount of self-confidence. That's never been my issue. I've always believed regardless of what I go into, what I'm doing, that I have the capacity to be the best in the world at that thing like to a, a truly a delusional level. Like if I picked up a basketball, I'm like, I bet I could be the best at this if I really dedicated myself to it. And that delusion has served me very, very well in a lot of different domains of life because I'm too stupid to acknowledge the reality of the situation, which is the likelihood of becoming, you know, the best at anything is like very, very low. And yet, though I've never become the best in the world at any one thing, I have become quite good at those things and living in alignment in my mind of like, see, I knew I could do it, right? So I'm delusional and that's helpful. And it's also not helpful in some, in some cases, but that's for, that's for a different day. That hasn't necessarily changed. Like I've always had confidence when I was in my 20s. And I've told you guys a story about sitting down with my, my ex-fiance, her parents asking if I could marry their daughter and the mom saying, hey, what are you gonna do to provide for our daughter? And I remember going home and really having a chip on my shoulder, feeling like I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove you wrong. And that set me down this like money making game uh, path to try and like win the money game. And but there was never any doubt in my mind when I was living in the back of that van, $80,000 in debt, like a year later from that conversation when my fiance had left me. There was never any doubt in my mind that if I applied myself that I could make money. Like I never, I never doubted that I could be a millionaire by 40 years old if I wanted to. And it just so happened at that point, like I was like, I was ready to want it. Um, so confidence, belief in self, that really hasn't fluctuated at all. Thank God that I'm not more confident in my self-belief because that would be an atrocious amount of ego for sure. But that's, that's both my strength and a weakness, right? Of my personality. And some people, they struggle on the other side of that. They have no confidence in themselves. They have no self-belief and they doubt themselves and everything that they do. And that is also, that's in the same way that having too much self-belief can be a negative thing. That I find is far, that can be far, far more detrimental because it stops people from ever even trying. But for me, what really changed is I got successful and success is, you know, uh, however you choose to define it. But for me, success was getting to a place in life where I, I didn't want for anything in the sense that I could go do what I want, when I want, where I want, with who I want. Like I had life freedom. I had control over my time. That was success to me. And so the, the big thing that changed when I became successful is I stopped in a, and I'm, I, I, I cringe almost to say this. I stopped being as selfish. I'm still very selfish. Still, still very self-focused, inwardly focused. And I, I accept that. But if you rewind to when I was in my twenties, I was way more, I was way worse. I, I never thought about anybody. I didn't think about the people in my life, my relationships, the hurt people I was hurting or the help, the, the helping, like how I could help people. And it, just, it never crossed my mind. And I think part of that is when you are, when your cup is empty, you're not really necessarily thinking about how can I go pour into other people like that. Just it never crossed my mind at that point. It wasn't until I started becoming more abundant mindset, like more abundant minded and abundant in my resources and resourcefulness that my cup started to fill. And as it started to fill and I realized like, well, I'm I'm not thirsty enough to drink all of this. What am I going to do? And that's that's really when I started looking outward and saying, well, what am I going to do to start making a meaningful impact on the, the, the world around me? 
not just make money, not just, you know, serve myself and my family, but what can I do for the community of up and coming entrepreneurs or people that are struggling with ADHD? And, and this in a re very real way over the last four or five years has led me down this path of creating this type of content that you're, you're listening to right now, which is really an attempt for me to share my learnings, my journey along the way, the, the failures, which are so numerous and some of the successes in an attempt to pour some out of something out of my cup hopefully into into your cup and maybe you know that can be the thing that helps you along like sake slake that's a funny word slake your thirst long enough so that you can you know keep in the game and get to the point where your cup is filling on its own too and then it becomes overflowing and from that overflow you can fill up the world's cups and so truly in, in a very interesting way success has made me more outwardly focused in a lot of ways and i i'm very thankful for that because you know, and it makes sense if when you're in that position where you don't have a lot and you're, you're really not really thinking about like how you can contribute meaningfully to the world. And this makes sense if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, hierarchy, uh, you got to have your shelter, your, you know, your food and your, your protection, your shelter, all that stuff taken care of before you can really start working on like self-actualization and like relationships and, and working on the world. And that was very much the case for me. Now, in terms of how has money changed me, this is an interesting one because I don't think money has really changed my my life in a meaningful way in certain ways, which I mean, for instance, I drive a 2015 Toyota Prius that has like 110,000 miles on it. It's the small Prius. It's like the Prius C for it's fantastic for par parallel parking in a city, but it is not an impressive car. I don't have any designer clothing really. Well, okay, that's not true. I actually have three suits that were made by these uh, twin brothers here in the Twin Cities who make the best suits I've ever seen in my life. I feel like James Bond when I wear them. Besides that, I don't wear designer clothing. I think I wear nice clothing. I wear like Lululemon and I wear like athleisure, but like I'm not I'm not getting gussied up with like $500 t-shirts or anything like that. I don't wear labels. I don't have a fancy watch. I, I don't have any. Well, I have, I have my Garmin Forerunner, which I use for working out, and I have like a, a $300 Eco Drive Citizen watch that I never wear. So I don't collect nice things. And Jamie and I, we live, we just moved out of our, you know, our single family home and we live in this nice apartment on the 14th floor overlooking the river. And this is like the bougiest thing that I, that we, we, we've splurged on in truth, like this fantastic view, this nice building. But even that, like for how much we make, this is actually a very cheap apartment, all things told, like which I'm completely, I'm like consistently reminded of when I'm like going to the elevator, going downstairs and there's all these like 21, 22 year old uh, college girls who all live in the building too. And I'm like, I think, I think we moved into like a sorority, like university house where like kids whose parents are like subsidizing their living or something are here. So uh, that's neither here nor there. But all this to say is like, my life hasn't like materially improved from like the material perspective. Um, we take a lot more trips. The trips we take are a higher quality for that. That has definitely improved. We still travel coach. Like we just flew to Texas, to Ireland and Mexico last month. So we took a lot of trips, a lot of those for work, but in each one of them, we just flew coach. <laughs> like I'm super cheap still, <laughs> like to the point where like, I won't even splurge necessarily to get the aisle seat and sit like with a little bit extra room and comfort plus. So still really cheap. And I think a lot of that is stemming from the fact that I still just have a lot of fear around money and I don't like that. I don't like spending it. It makes me feel bad um, because it reminds me of how it felt when I was in the back of that van. Like I just, I remember the value of the dollar and having to do the math of like, okay, I got 20 bucks. Do I put that in the gas or do I get dinner? Or if I do get dinner, how much can I put in the gas, right? Like you're doing that mental jujitsu and I, I, I still struggle truthfully, even though we have plenty, I still struggle with that, um, that spending mindset. So how does our life change? I feel much more secure in a lot of ways where I don't, I don't worry about money in the same way that I did before. And maybe the most important thing is I have the confidence, the belief that no matter if you took all my money away, I could get it back. I, like I have that ability. My life will never go back to living in that van against my will. If I choose to, I can, but I have the ability to earn it all back. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing that's changed is the money was only ever proof of the skills and the traits that I had, that I had acquired. 
And so it was like a scoreboard in a way. And it's like, oh, you do have the ability to put points on the board. And just knowing that um, has given me a lot of self-confidence in life to go and pursue opportunities and do things that maybe like 10 years ago would have been very, very scary to, to do. So, but you know, it's still a learning process, still a thing. Um, it's still a journey. And all that's to say is that I don't really think that I've changed all that drastically, but um, that'd be a good question maybe for loved ones and family and friends who like know me really well and say like, no, nah, Abdra, you ain't the same. You you, you changed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I could be completely delusional. There's a very high likelihood that's true. <laughs> so but those are today's questions. I hope this brought you a little bit of value. Um, if it did, let me know. Drop a review. Those mean uh, seriously a, a world's. Uh, it means a lot to me. We got like 60 ratings and review uh, reviews on Spotify. We got like 30 or 40 on iTunes, and that's fan- that's so cool. Like every single one, I read every one of them. By the way, guys, I really do, um, and it means a lot to me. Your words of encouragement and support and just knowing that I'm not screaming into the void. It means a ton. So thank you as always for being here. I'll look forward to seeing you back around these parts tomorrow. But until then, stay hyper-focused, my friend.